Hi, my name is Ramida. This is me and welcome to my channel. I am a Classscape Cityscape artist. Behind me is some of my work and I get asked quite a lot like how do you mix the, the colors for your skies? Behind me right here is a really colorful rainbow cloudscape that I've done and a lot of people are very curious and how I do that and sometimes I do like quick little time lapses of me mixing paint but sometimes you can't see exactly what I'm working on. So today I'm going to go into more detail on how I mix paint to do a rainbow cloudscape like this. So I was asked in one of my comments on one of my previous YouTube videos by John, thank you John, for commenting and leaving a suggestion on stuff that you like to know. I really appreciate it. John said he wanted to see like more in depth how I mix paint, I'm, I'm guessing specifically for my cloudscape, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to mix paint for a little cloudscape, just a little five by seven inch canvas like this one here where we're gonna work on a, a small one today so that the palette is very limited and I can mix most of the paints that will be featured on it uh, I'll show you right here this is gonna be the source image it's just like something where the composition is very simple but the colors are very nice and that's usually what I use to pick on a canvas that's this small right behind me I have another one where the composition is very simple but the colors are so so pretty that's the kind of images I pick for the the really tiny paintings like this so today we're gonna be mixing just the base colors, uh, the base rainbowy colors like the the blues, the blue, the the purple, the yellow, and stuff like that. Like the main colors that you see on this little cloudscape that we're gonna do. And then I'm going to commentarize. I'm going to commentate over that process and give you my insight on exactly what I was thinking, exactly why I used some colors, some pigments maybe any mistakes that I make along the way I mean we're only human <laughs> so we're gonna move over to my desk where I am going to watch over that footage and give you some of that insight okay and here we go hello welcome to my computer desk so let's get started Okay, first off, left to right, on the very left, I have, I just pulled out of my drawer, like, all of the paints, the pigments that I think that I'll need for this cloudscape. I think I ended up not using one, <laughs> so guess which one that is. That's a fun game. <laughs> and then I got uh, my white, of course. I brought up my two smallest uh, palette knives, and I ended up trying to use my smallest one most of the time because this painting is really tiny, and I had a feeling if I grabbed my bigger palette knife then I might mix way too much paint. A single use uh, palette paper pad right there in front of me. That's what I'm going to be touching the most. And then on my very right I got, I busted out the, the little canvas, the little 5 by 7 canvas so I can visualize how big the canvas is so I can, it's, it's good to have that like nearby so you can like look at it and be like okay this is how big the painting is. I don't need to mix too much paint. That's just, that's just a waste. And then of course uh, I got my my source image all blown up as big as it can be on my laptop so yeah the very first thing I grab is my white of course this is a titanium white all of my paints are Winsor & Newton and I think what I'm trying to do first is mix all of the main colors I see from top to bottom so at the very very top is like the darkest most prominent blue so that's what I'm gonna try to do here first I, I think I'm going to use just a, my phthalo blue because that's like the main blue that I use for my skies and thalo blue is pretty yeah, perfect for skies but also very very pigmented so I really only need like a tiny tiny bit and then I can work from there and you can see me like not even squeezing the the tube I'm just like tapping it onto the the palette paper just so that whatever is like there at the very top it just goes boop 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 really that's that's all you really need even if the canvas was bigger really don't want to squeeze very much on that tube at all because that paint is very very pigmented so yeah yeah, I mix I mix that up just to see how you know how blue that that blue is right away and it, like I said I am working from the main colors I see top to bottom um, if the if the canvas was really like a uh, landscape very horizontal if you will that I probably would do left to right okay I'm grabbing my cobalt blue which is a more expensive blue it's like a, a series four and so I have a feeling that this one's like a little bit more cooler toned a uh, cool toned of a blue because phthalo blue can be really like greeny I mean that's really good for skies because like I feel like skies have a little bit of green in them they're not really like 
a really really uh, cool tone blue unless it's like nighttime so uh, yeah I put a little bit of cobalt blue in there I really don't feel too bad for using this really expensive pigment because I really hardly ever touch it so I'm like okay uh, this is a really cool t cool tone blue that that's what I want to use Looks like I'm going back in with some more phthalo blue. I, th I think it's too cool toned now and it needs a little bit more of the, the blue pigment. And that's really easy to do if you just get some a little bit more phthalo blue because I bet if I add a lot more cobalt blue, it might not be as blue as I would want it to right away. And I do have French ultramar ultramarine blue as well uh, in my uh, artillery. <laughs> I, I feel like it's not a good sky blue, so that's why I'm not I didn't bust it out today. So I added a little bit in of that extra white that I had. I had a little bit more extra white on my palette just in general because I have such a huge tube of titanium white that it's very hard just to like squeeze out a tiny bit because the tube is so big and the, the opening of the tube is very large so I ended up splitting it to two but in the end I felt like I needed just more blue in general so I ended up mixing it together. But now it's too light but I was like oh there's a lot of blue in this. There's like a lot of blue in the sky in the background behind the clouds so I was like okay I think I need more more blue because it really with these skies really cannot have too much blue so I add a bit more cobalt into it okay just clean my palette knife because I really just used one palette knife this whole time so I got a little paper towel now that I'm just gonna just wipe it clean okay so next I'm gonna try to do this purple that I got a lot of a lot of purple in this one so I thought I might as well bust out my purple pigment that I have it's like the only only tube of paint that I have that's just purple so I was like you know what let me let me start just mixing this with a little bit of white and and we'll move on from there it'll be like okay a little bit red a little bit blue you know and, and figure it out from there and the thing was with this purple color is it does make a really cool toned purple but i only just use a little bit so it just gets me to like okay this is what purple looks like because sometimes when you just like mix uh, a blue and a red together sometimes it can be really muddy depending on which one you use so i was like you know what let me just start off with this purple figure it out the painting's very small it's okay so i end up grabbing it's my magenta color i'll put i'll put the the real names right here it's just a, i'm just commentating <laughs> over it right now so i can't really see so i grabbed my magenta color because it the the purple looks really neon in the source image and i really want to keep that neonness of the purple so i add in my my one magenta color again not a not a cheap color but i think it's too pinky now so i added a, a little bit of phthalo blue and oh no it's too much you see me get mad I, I throw my hands up so i was like gosh dang it so i cut it in half and the the phthalo blue and then i put it to the side because it's just it's just wait i put way too much phthalo blue that's what mis you know mistakes happen even i might be a professional but I, I still make mistakes so what i'm doing is just trying to save I'm trying to change up that really blue blue color and I added a little bit of pink a little bit of more blue just to like have like an extra really dark blue on hand I got my light blue that I mixed first and now I got this like really weird dark blue okay so I think I'm starting over with this purple I'm getting like the extra blue that I had from when I split the phthalo blue into two and I add a little bit of I think that was my rose my rose color permanent rose I really like that. I'm finding out. I'm taking a little bit longer to figure it to, to look to I'm looking at. I'm like, okay, I think that's really good. And it's always better to have something be too dark than to be too light because you can always add white to it later and like okay and now i'm grabbing my indian yellow is it and this is a brand new tube of indian yellow now i'm trying to make this really the really muddy color that you find in between the yellow and the purple in the clouds so you know brand new tube of indian yellow and so i totally forgot that at the very top of your oil paint tubes is just like a layer of just oil and so a lot of like what spewed out was just oil with like a little bit of Indian yellow and so you see me really like having to mix this because it's like really wet a lot, a lot more wetter than the other pigments are I ended up putting a lot more Indian yellow than I wanted to so it looked very yellow so I grabbed like the tiniest tiniest bit of sailor blue again to try to make it muddier but then of course I ended up making a green as you know so here I am. I'm grabbing, I think that was my permanent rose again, to try to m make it just muddier. A 
little bit more and it just takes me longer to mix it when it has a lot more oil in there you see like the pigment the paint really looks the same but i'm like mixing it forever and that's because it's, it does not want to mix together because there's so much oil and it kind of like separating it almost Okay, next I'm gonna try to do that orangey yellow that's very prominent in there. I know that's very important, so I was like, okay, I better do that next. So I get more Indian yellow and just mix it with a little bit of white. But I want something that glows more, and so that's when I grab, and that's when I grab the cadmium yellow, which is the nice expensive yellow that I have, but it's perfect, perfect for these sunsets, and I definitely really do need them. You see that? Perfect. A perfect yellow. Don't even need to touch that anymore. Okay, next I'm gonna try to do that really glowy red, red, uh, red with a little bit of orange down at the bottom. And so I've done this a million times before, so I know the concoction. And I grab my really old tube of cadmium red. Again, very expensive, but I barely touched it. You know, like that tube is so, so old. A Little bit of cadmium red and even less of cadmium yellow. And then boom, look at that. Such a glowing like red with a little bit of yellow in it. That's exactly what I'll need for like the sun right there at the very edge of the horizon. Okay, next I'm trying to mix the very faded yellow that's behind the sun at the very crest of the sky. So not the blue of the sky, but like, ah, I need to figure out technical terms for these. The the blend from the sky, from the, the yellow sun to like the blue of the sky, basically. But it, it looks really muddy in this um, version. So I'm trying to mix up all the different paints that I think that I need. So I end up getting a little bit of thalo blue, a little bit of Indian yellow, seeing that it's like very, very green. Yeah, and then that's it. That's all the paints. That's everything. Yeah, so I always end up doing like about five pigments whenever I start off a painting. In this case, I did seven. Yeah, seven. I think it just so happened that like I ended up making two blues when usually I would just make one. But uh, you know, it's like you, I'll probably use that, the both of the blues probably a, a really decent amount. So yeah, hopefully the, this helps, this makes sense. If, if you see, I did not use my my green tur tur turquoise turquoisey color in the end but i think but pretty much i was able to to grab all the other uh, pigments that i had originally guessed i think i was like you know what like maybe i'll need a green i don't know usually sometimes i do sometimes i don't it really depends on the sky but yeah so i hope that clears up you know my thought process just make some paint it's probably like the most like in-depth that you can see about like my thought process of mixing paint the different pigments that i use and like the reasons why and i have done this many many times as you saw i knew exactly how to get that really bright yellow and the really bright bright ready orangey color of the the sun going behind the sun the the earth <laughs> as the the sun leaves the sky and goes behind the earth it makes that bright orangey color and I've done that so many times I know exactly the concoction cadmium red with like a little bit of cadmium yellow you know and nothing else no white because if you mix white then it, it it kills it I hope this really helps I hope that this answers your question John and you got to see my thought process on how I, I mix paint you know this is pretty much what I do for every painting it's just that in this case it's just like a very small amount which makes it quicker for you to see because I'm not like sitting there rotating my wrist for a million hours because I got a huge cl clump of paint on that palette just mixing it this time it was like a little little tiny little thing because the canvas is only going to be five by seven inches so yes uh I, I would suggest maybe subscribing if you want to see me actually paint this painting if you're really excited now that you got to see all of the the paints that are going to be featured in it I don't know maybe subscribe and if you uh, you found this really helpful on how to paint your cloudscapes or or just found it fun you just had a fun time then give this a like so thank you so much for watching uh, my name is Ramija yeah that's it uh, goodbye